Yo guys, today I wanted to talk about my optimized force feedback settings for the Moza R9 wheelbase for F122. I've been using the R9 wheelbase and the Moza FSR formula wheel for the majority of my time racing in F122. So I thought I'd share my force feedback settings and my pit house settings as well. These settings give you a pretty good feel behind the wheel with force feedback that's optimized to present you with a lot of different information through the wheel. The first thing you'll want to do when you load up F122 with the Moza R9 wheelbase is head over to the calibration settings. These settings will allow you to adjust elements such as linearity and dead zone. And it's a great place to test your wheels working as well using the button test. The good news is that you shouldn't really have to adjust too much in the calibration settings. I apply a little brake dead zone just to avoid me touching the brake pedal and accidentally deactivating DRS, but that's really just my personal preference. And then we can move over to the meat of these settings and the force feedback settings. And this is where the majority of the fine tuning for the force feedback will happen. So looking at the force feedback settings, the first thing we need to do is ensure vibration and force feedback is turned on. Without it, we simply won't get any force feedback at all. So turn that on. Then I set my force feedback strength to 95. I remove this away from 100 a little bit just to eliminate any clipping that may occur from turning the force feedback up too high. Next up, I set the on-track effects to 40. This will amplify effects such as road surface imperfections and bumps in the road. If you're getting too much vibration in your wheel when driving on track, you can reduce this setting. Then I set the rumble strip effects to 35. This should always be lower than your on-track effects as the rumble strips can really vibrate your steering wheel quite aggressively. Don't lower it down past around 25-30 though, otherwise you won't really feel the difference between the track and the kerbs. I've lowered the off-track effects even further down to 30. This will limit how aggressive the grass and the gravel are when you go off track. Lowering this setting will make it easier to recover your car if you overshoot a corner. The wheel damper, this adds a level of weight to your steering wheel. If you go too high with this setting, your wheel will feel sticky and too heavy. Around 20 with this setting feels just about right. You get a good feeling of weight in the wheel without it feeling too sluggish. Then I keep understeer enhanced turned off this setting will make your steering wheel feel incredibly light when you start to understeer, and I'd recommend turning the scent on while you're learning the limits of the car. Then, turn it off once you're comfortable that you can detect understeer. Then for wheel rotation, keep this set to 360 degrees for the F1 cars and 900 degrees for the supercars. Then to really nail the feeling of force feedback from your Moza R9 in F122, you also need to tweak some settings in the pit house software. This software is included with the wheelbase and you can adjust a variety of settings here, including the color of your shift lights and how fast they light up. But the force feedback settings in the pit house software can dramatically change how your force feedback feels. There are a variety of presets available in the basic settings of pit house, which will make wide sweeping changes. These are good for jumping between different styles and games quickly. But I'd recommend copying these settings to really optimize your force feedback. Starting with the steering angle, we set that to 360 degrees to align this setting with the in-game setting. Keep road sensitivity set to 10 to allow the full range of road detail to be translated. Then set your game force feedback intensity to 100%. This can be used as a global strength controller, so if you'd prefer lighter force feedback, you can turn this slider down and it will affect every other setting proportionately. The maximum speed of steering wheel can be set to around 60%. This affects the speed that the wheel can return to center and how fast it will move. 60% is just about right with this setting. Too high and the wheel will just move too fast. For F122 in particular, I set the mechanical back to center strength to 0% as this is really unneeded. Then the mechanical damping works in tandem with the in-game wheel damping setting. Leave this at around 40% for a good amount of weight in your steering wheel much higher and your steering wheel will feel like it's stuck in honey and be less responsive. Then we can go over to the advanced settings. The maximum output torque limit will introduce a cap to the strongest torque that is outputted from the wheel. At 100% your wheel will be capable of outputting 9 newton meters of torque, but I like to lower this slightly to 95% just to prevent maxing the wheel's motor out too much. You should leave handoff protection turned on. This is quite simply a safety feature that can detect if you've taken your hands off the steering wheel and it will prevent it from spinning too fast uncontrollably. 
The steering wheel inertia ratio is the point at which the wheel will detect you aren't holding it. Set this to around 2250. You can turn the status indicator on or off as this is just controlling the blue light on the front of the wheelbase. Leave the temperature control strategy on radical as this just affects how hot the wheelbase can get during use. Then the soft limiter will affect where the force feedback still comes through the wheel when you've turned it to its maximum rotation. Again, leave this setting on. And also leave work mode enabled. Moving over to the right hand side, the natural inertia will affect the overall weight of your wheel and can be used to amplify the force feedback. This is useful if driving in very raw race cars and you want to emulate that heavy feeling. For F122, I'd recommend leaving this at no more than 150%. For the mechanical friction, set this to around 15% or so. This is independent from the game's force feedback and will introduce a friction style effect. Higher values will smooth out your force feedback and introduce a very mechanical feeling. Your speed dependence damping will change how your wheel is dampened when you drive over a certain speed. It essentially makes your wheel feel heavier at higher speeds, which is realistic. Set this to around 15% as we don't want this effect to be too strong. Then set the starting point to around 185-190 km an hour. Then we can move over to the force feedback effect equalizer. This gives you even deeper levels of control over specific vibrations and frequencies in game. You can really tinker with specific feelings that you get from the wheel. To adjust these settings, simply move along the frequencies along the bottom and either drag the sliders up or down to increase effects within that frequency range. For lower frequencies such as body bumps and slow speed curbs, I kept the slider to around or just over 100%. For ABS vibration and higher speed curves, I've increased the effect to around 150% to make these effects more pronounced. Then I've lowered the higher frequencies to around 20%. Setting these low will make forces such as driving off track much lower, giving you a much higher chance of recovering if you have an off. Of course, all of these settings are subjective but they all combine to give me a really positive feeling when racing F122. The final part of setting up your Moza R9 wheel with F122 is to set your button mapping. In fact, this should probably be the first thing you do. This step will be very different depending on which steering wheel you have. The CS steering wheel, for example, has much fewer inputs than the GS and FSR wheels, so you'd have less inputs to map. I'm running through this process with the FSR formula wheel, but wanted to show you how I set my wheel mapping up for F122. So now we're in the wheel mapping screen, you can see that you can just go down, click a button and then apply the input you want to. So for steer left, steer right, just click the enter button and then enter the input. So start turning the steering wheel left and right. Pause, I always have kind of on the one of the lower down buttons. Um, gear up, gear down on the shifters at the back, clutch, I use the dual, the dual clutch paddles at the back, the analog paddles. And then I like to set the look back left and right to the right hand joystick so I can easily kind of glance around the car to see what's around me. Again the replay button which I, I don't use too often, I have down kind of low on the wheel. DRS I have up top left and then pit limiter I have top right. And then these middle buttons. I use uh, radio for the left one that's labeled K and I'd use the MFD on the right hand one so it's just easy to access. And you can see for the MFD menu I use the left uh, joystick to then be able to navigate that in game. Overtake I use top left so I've got overtake top left and then DRS next to it. So both my kind of boost buttons are to the left side of the wheel really. And then just go through and the menu controls themselves I also set up so that up, down, left and right works. I also set the extra actions to the top three buttons on the left hand side because then when you're in a session you can press the furthest left button, the one that's labeled DRS, to kind of jump into your monitor. You can press the middle button, the one that's got box written on it, to bring up car setups and open that and then S1 will also do some actions. So as you see just select S1 there. So those three buttons are the buttons I use when I'm kind of navigating around the menus. And then I've got a few shortcuts. So the button just to the right of the screen I like to use for the car damage and then the top left I use for car temperature 
and tire temperatures. So they're just easy for me to press and access and immediately see whether I've got any damage or what my tire temps are like. And then I use these rotary encoders on the front to adjust elements such as traction control and the rotary encoders on the side, the brake bias and the differential, just make it really easy to make super quick adjustments without taking my wheel, my hands off the wheel while racing. Again, ERS on the front encoder. So then I've got ERS and my fuel mix on the front encoder, my brake bias and my traction control on the thumb encoders. And that's how I map my wheel so that everything is kind of there and usable. This combination of inputs really helps me access certain functions while racing without using too much brain power. I know exactly where my overtake and my DRS buttons are and I can quickly change my car setup on the fly. Your button mapping preference may be a little different to mine, which is absolutely fine. Just go with whatever feels comfortable for you. Now, these settings should ideally give you a very realistic and quite immersive experience with F122 with your Moza R9 wheelbase. But let me know in the comments below how you get on with these settings. Do you like them? Have you made any tweaks to them? And what settings are you running? As always guys, hit that like button. It really helps this video out. It helps it get in front of other people. Drop a comment below and subscribe to our channel if you want more sim racing content. We've got some pretty exciting content coming next week. We've got some more F1 content. So hit that subscribe button and the alert bell if you want to be notified as soon as any videos drop. But for now guys, I will see you on track.